And this view again is um, from the WB-57. That's one of our high altitude planes as it continues to track Dragon um, ahead of those drogue parachute parachutes being deployed and uh, shortly after that we'll see the, the main parachutes deployed but we'll stand by for those drogues to go ahead and get deployed. We are hearing that Dragon has good pitch and yaw stability, um, so everything continuing to go really smoothly, um, targeting that splashdown at 12.29 a.m. Uh, Pacific time, so just about four minutes or so from now. Once again, this... Oh, there we can see that the drogue parachutes, thanks to that WB-57 views, drogues are deployed. We can see two good-looking drogues. Oh, this is a great view from inside the parachute bay where those drogue parachutes... Drogue chute descent rate nominal. Next, those... Dragon copies. Those drogue chutes will next pull out the main parachutes, and we'll see those four main parachutes open and inflate. Once again, Dragon is, oh, we can see deployment there of the four main parachutes. Dragon is doing this autonomously, releasing each set of parachutes. We can now see those four main parachutes begin to inflate. Pretty incredible to see how, as those main parachutes inflate, the capsule itself slows down sig even more significantly. Main chute descent rate nominal. Copy, nominal descent rate 1,000 meters. Copy, 1,000. We will continue to hear call outs um, from Commander Matt Dominic uh, of the distance from the water. Uh, those parachutes really doing their job now, as you mentioned, Kate, starting to slow the spacecraft down even more and more. By the time the crew actually does splash down in the water, they'll be going about 15, 16 miles per hour. Um, so those, those parachutes really taking on that air to slow down the spacecraft. 800 meters. Copy, 800. Like you said, Commander, Matt Dominic will continue to report altitude every 200 meters. So we just heard the 800 meter call out. And we also heard that the descent rate was nominal or as expected. Another Six good call. 600 meters. A good call out there. Copy, 600. Continuing to get great views from the WB-57 as Crew-8 is uh, nearing splashdown. 400 meters. Copy, 400. meters embracing copy 200 and embraced at this point in time the seats in dragon have rotated a little bit to help provide a more comfortable and safer uh, bodily orientation for the crew members as they come closer uh, to splashdown Like we said before, the capsule's going about 15 or 16 miles per hour. And splashdown. And Endeavor, we see the same. On behalf of SpaceX, welcome home. And as you can see on your screen, we do have visual confirmation. 
teams. What an incredible hot ride. Again, we do have visual confirmation of Crew 8 successfully splashing down after 235 days in space. They are now back on Earth. Dragon Endeavor has returned home, and NASA astronauts Matt Dominic, Mike Barrett, and Jeanette Epps, and Roscosmos cosmonaut Alexander Grabankin are back on Earth after an approximately 34-hour return journey from space. As you can see, SpaceX recovery ship and team have been waiting for Dragon Splashdown, and they're now making their way to the Splashdown location. Teams have been ready and waiting about three nautical miles away, so it's going to take about 30 minutes for them to make their way uh, to, uh, to Matthew, Michael, Jeanette, and Alexander. They're inside Dragon. We can see there the recovery lights uh, shining some light onto the Dragon capsule. Now, immediately after splashdown, the Dragon capsule automatically cuts the lines. Dragon, we see water operating flight control state. SpaceX copies, we see the same. So that was just Commander Matt Dominic reporting the orientation uh, in which Dragon is now in, which we see there on your screen. Uh, like I mentioned before, the Dragon capsule automatically cuts. Basically, uh, stable one. Copy and concur, stable one. Dragon automatically cuts the lines to the parachutes, so we will see some of the recovery team in the fast boats, which are now approaching the splashdown site, we'll see a couple of those boats divert over to where the parachutes landed as we will retrieve those from the water. Uh, we will also see a fast boat approach the Dragon capsule. That team is responsible for making sure that there are no remaining hypergolic uh, residue uh, on the capsule after it has spent significant time in space. Those uh, hypergolic propellants are what are used to maneuver Dragon on orbit, and they are toxic to people here on Earth. And so we want to make sure that the recovery team is safe, so we'll see that fast boat approach and perform initial safety checks to make sure there are no hypergolic residuals there on the exterior of the capsule. We'll then see that team begin to rig up the Dragon capsule with some fittings, some straps that will ultimately be utilized to lift the capsule on board our recovery vessel, Megan. And we did have a good view uh, there just a minute ago, and you can kind of see it here. The the water is almost uh, mirror-like. It's quite, quite smooth. Um, very beautiful weather there off the coast of Pensacola for these recovery operations. Um, so as you mentioned, they are going to begin to assess uh, capsule safety 